this is Compressor Part 2, where we stare at all of this beautiful random gibberish that we wrote last time. All right. So this time I want to actually look into saving compressed versions of uh, GameCraft worlds. But before we do that, I want to just check out to make sure everything still works. I did end up updating everything to the preview version, as you can see by all these changed um, path names here. So I want to make sure everything is working still. And while I'm at it, we'll do some debugging and stuff. I can also show you this uh, new thing that I have here. It's uh, IntelliJ's IDE. Instead of using MonoDevelop, I'm actually using like a paid IDE now. Luckily, I actually got it for free because I'm a student. But uh, so things look a bit different and there's a couple more goodies in this one, which is why I'm using it now. So let's um, check things out, see if we can get things to work. Um, so we need to copy. I uninstalled everything while I was doing the preview. I only managed to install Pixie again. Um, so let's go over here and install Compressor again. I did just build a new debug version against the latest version of GameCraft, so everything compiles properly, I just don't know if things run properly. So that's that, Control C, Control V. And then there we have it, that is installed. Um, I would like to bring up one other thing before I actually show how this works, or if it works. Um, I've also changed this to iEnhance plugin because I was doing some messing around with some of the patching software that um, I use for modding GameCraft. So that iEnhance plugin is now the de facto plugin interface instead of iPlugin. But uh, with that out of the way, let's launch GameCraft and see how things turn out. Uh, so. I did notice after one update that there was an error whenever I started up with Compressor. I didn't actually debug it, so I don't know what it's about. Um, just in case that shows up again, I'm going to open the log just so I can watch to see what's happening. And turn on auto reload, because that's nice. It seems to me like it's working fine. Ignore all those. Oh, I guess this is still using the debug version of something. That's fine. It's just going to be a bit spammy, <laughs> but that's all right. Um, so it seems fine. Let's go into a world and just make sure that everything works there too. I'm going to run the command to reload things. I guess I should check to make sure it actually loaded. That it did. Wonderful. Um, so let's uh, make sure it shows up and help. Oh, that's broken. So it turns out, as suspected, I was just dumb. Um, I mean, that's usually the case with coding. It's never anyone but yourself who's at fault. Let me show you that it actually works now. So you see I added this fun warning, and it actually gives me a startup message saying it started up. Woohoo! Um, Strangely, Pixie doesn't, but that's not my problem. <laughs> well, it is, but not immediately my problem. Um, yeah, so now when I go into a game, so you can see Pixie actually loads, it just doesn't print anything. I'm not sure why I set it up that way. Um, but compressor, that method is, well, I can scroll with my mouse, or by dragging. Anyway, so you see re reload compressors here, and it actually works. If I Try and do reload compressor, it actually works, which is exactly what I want, and that's all wonderful. So now that that's working, and we've gotten back to basic functionality, even after I already messed it all up, um, let's get into what we're going to do um, 
in this video. Well, some of it at least. So today I want to actually implement uh, save compression. And in order to do that, I need to actually patch some specific parts of GameCraft. Last time we didn't do any patching. It was already uh, basically set up for us thanks to some existing software and patching systems. But this time I actually want to patch something at runtime. So in order to figure out what we need to patch, um, I need to open up a decompiler for the game. So GameCraft is written in C Sharp or .NET um, code, which means that I need to use an IL decompiler or um, something that decompiles .NET's bytecode like compiled version. Um, so let me actually focus for a second and go open up all the DLLs so you can see how this works. You see there's all these DLLs. These are all .NET DLLs, which means I can decompile them with something like ILSpy or DNSpy. There's quite a few that can do this. In fact, um, just my IDE can do it too, but I actually prefer using a separate program, which is why I still use this. Um, so we're just going to decompile everything because I'm going to need to look at most of it. Um, I mean, everything references everything. If it has GameCraft in the name or RoboCraft X in the name, yeah, some things still use the old naming scheme for things. Also some things that are made by FreeJam, which are in fact not labeled as RoboCraft specific, but as soon as you open them up, you see the namespace is RoboCraft X or GameCraft or something. So that's something to watch for. I sort of know what I need to look at because I implemented some other things which are also related to saving uh, GameCraft files um, in the API. So I know I need to go to RoboCraft X.save and load. That's pretty self evident. Save and load, that sounds like something that would do some saving and loading of, I don't know, something in the game that's saved and loaded. And the biggest thing that's saved and loaded in the game is the save file. So this does a lot of things. Um, most of it's implemented here. Uh, um, I'm not gonna go through the whole call stack and see where this actually comes from, but suffice it to say that it's called um, from uh, as soon as you load the game basically, and that's what most of the loading screen is. It's actually deserializing the game and changing it into something that's easier to process instead of something that's easier to store. So you notice that there's serialized data from disk, which disk is storage, which is sort of confusing. Um, so there's this cool thing here. It says file that read all bytes. This makes my life a bit easier actually, because I think before it didn't use this. But essentially this is grabbing the game save file and reading everything from it. And then it's throwing it into a byte array and it's then doing some processing. But for us, that doesn't really matter. All we need to know is it just reads all bytes, which is important because I need to somehow uh, spoof this or intercept it so that I can compress the data when we're saving and when we're loading. This is, this is reading. So when we're reading, when we're loading from disk, I need to decompress it before this returns. So that's part of it. Let me find the other one. Um, there's a lot of stuff here, which is just um, dependency injected, which is exactly what this uh, save game data service does. It um, injects this dependency into the service so that it doesn't have to deal with it itself. But this data service, in fact, implements everything. This is just an implementation, which isn't going to be very helpful. But if I go here, it should also have the implementation nearby. Look at that. So, so as you can see here, the execute method, it's in fact writing all the data back to it. So that means that we have two methods that we want to patch. So let's do this the standard harmony way, um, just because it's easiest. So I can create a class or interface, but we're going to make a class. Um, usually I like to name my patch um, after the class that it's patching and then just put patch at the end. So we're going to call it file patch. 
but I also want to, I'm patching a specific method in it. And in this case, we're actually patching two methods. Oh, that's glitchy. I love it how that doesn't go away. But we're patching write all bytes and read all bytes. So I need to make one that's file read all bytes patch. And we don't need to do that. And then we can add another one called file write all bytes patch. And then for both of these, I need to use harmony lib need to import it and also use some of its functions to patch the game. So first one to do would be harmony patch, harmony patch. And I do need to check this has a couple of requirements. Um, oh, I can't spell type of file and it's going to Prompt me that. Luckily, it's public, which means you don't have to do uh, too much hacking around. Sometimes you have to um, do a bit more reflection to get the type and the method name because things don't work. So this is read all bytes. Um, that's all we need to add there. Um, we need to add a a public static uh, method called post fix in this case. In this case, because we want to do it immediately before it returns the value of it. So what I'm going to do is I need to know what read all bytes takes in, right? You can I can sort of hack this by I'm doing file.readallbytes and see exactly what it takes in. So it takes in a path and it returns a byte array. So I need to set a path string and if I want to modify the results I can do ref I believe it's three underscores for result um, I will look that up in a minute it could just be two I'm thinking it might be two but that's fine that's just um, indicates to Harmony that I want specifically the result that's being returned and not just some parameter that is called the result. That's what the underscores indicate, basically. Um, yeah, and so it's similar for this one. So that's all done. Now we need to do the actual logic here. So we need to figure out first how we're compressing things. I need to look up some how compression works exactly in C sharp. I am aware there's a built in library. Abrupt jump cut, go! This is like a day later now. Um, so, just to follow up as to what we were discussing last time, um, there are two points. One was how many underscores does the result take? Um, so, I ended up looking that up. It is just two, according to the Harmony documentation here. And we also wanted to figure out the compression system. And I was looking this up and I was like, oh, cool, we've got some decent compression algorithms here. But uh, broadly, compression is available, but it's only available in .NET Core, unfortunately, which is not what we're using. We're using .NET Framework 4.7.2. And look, it's gone. Yeah. So anyway, that's, that's fine. We'll just use uh, gzip instead. That's the pretty standard option for it these days, which is fine. We'll still get good compression out of it. It just won't be super amazing. And I mean, for a compression, I'd rather have something that's fast than um, really good compression ratio. So that's fine. Let's get coding then. Um, oh, I switched out of it. But this is, the namespace is system.io.compression. So I'm just going to proactively import that. That way I can get some helpful stuff from it. Compression. There is a sort of sneaky um, gotcha here though. Um, when we're reading all bytes, I want to check before I try to decompress it if it is actually already compressed or if it was compressed. There's no point in decompressing this, something that isn't compressed because you'll just get garbage or it'll crash or something. So to check that first, I'm going to actually 
use the result. I'm going to check some of the first result values for this and make sure they are correct. Um, so in order to do this, I'm going to do a small for loop here. Then we're gonna go over every value and check if they are the same. If they aren't the same, then that's an issue. And so we'll just return and not do anything to it. Stack overflow to the rescue. And then we decompress them here. And we'd update the result. So that's all we have to do for that one. Oh, I should actually make sure that the path is correct too. So how we're gonna do this is if path ends with you notice that they all like every game save ends with game save.gc and that's the end of it um, which is an important no that's not the right thing there we go so basically I just want to make sure that if it doesn't end with that don't do anything I'll save file do nothing and then again on this one we have to do something similar we're just basically doing the inverse of this we want to instead compress the file There's one final thing I have to do before I'm done, which is actually initialize Harmony. I realize I haven't been doing that. So these are annotated with Harmony stuff, which means that they should run properly. So now that this is all running and things are being initialized, let's build it and install it in GameCraft and we'll see how it goes. Okay, I, I'm I'm currently accepting bets on how badly this is going to fail. I see it's much bigger, so we must have changed something. <laughs> um, let's hope that it works. It's the moment of truth. Come on, you can do it. Oh, we don't need that. There's two possibilities when it crashes, like right now. The fact that it didn't crash right now is a good sign. Um, cool. All right. I am actually going to create a new game because I don't want to corrupt any of my existing games. I like them. Um, <laughs> while we're looking at this, you can see I was messing around with some things. Anyway. Um, I don't actually need to do anything here. I just need to save the game. Um, please don't crash, please don't crash, please don't crash, please don't crash. Alrighty, that didn't crash as far as I can tell. Uh, right, I can compress, save, that's a good sign. All right, let's quit without saving because I actually already did save it. Um, see if I can edit this. Ooh. So it worked one way. That's so wonderful. I sort of wanted it to work both ways, but that's just me. <laughs> so um, anyway, that's sort of a small victory. Um, I will go check out how much smaller that game save is. This is not the right place. Um, compared to my other ones. So for reference, I think this is also an empty game save. It's about 10, 10 kilobytes. This one is 20, 20 bytes. I feel like this did not work properly. <laughs> Let's check what it looks like. Uh, yeah, that's a bad sign. 
it didn't actually read anything from it. It's all, yeah, it's all empty bytes. I don't know why that is. I'm very concerned right about now. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's at this point that I should read the documentation a bit more and then come back and see what I've been doing wrong this whole time. All right, after quickly reading the documentation, I noticed that there is a overload with compression mode, which allows me to set whether to decompress or compress, which sounds useful, and I probably should have realized this earlier, but right now I've both sort of set to compress, which doesn't make any sense, because obviously when I'm reading, I don't want to compress. Um, or Yeah, I don't want to compress, I want to decompress. Um, also, that's not proper grammar. Priorities. Um, so yeah, let's set this to a compression mode. And we'll do decompress, which is fine. And then um, this is the error happened here too, right? It said it had no idea how long the thing was, which is unfortunate because I really need to know how long it is if I want to read it all. So I'm going to look into that next and see um, what to do about that. Okay, I've read some more documentation and I'm slightly annoyed now. So as you can see, this is the length um, method or property that we're trying to uh, read from and it says it always throws an exception, which isn't very useful. It sort of defeats the purpose of actually having it. Um, so that means I have to find some other way of getting the data out and not just brute forcing it by saying read everything, read the length of whatever it is, because it doesn't know how long it is, or I can't get it. So instead, we're going to have to rewrite this logic here. I think the best option is to actually make another memory stream, and then use that memory stream to hold all the data, and then when we're finally done, we can read it all out again into a new result like this. So now I think I've removed all calls to gzip.length. In that case, I will build this and we will try again and hope that it works this time. Now I will point out that this game is completely corrupted, so I'm gonna actually delete it because <laughs> we don't need it. And we will try again. I just wanna save and quit. Let's do that, let's do compressor compression test two. No, the other one doesn't exist. I don't want to. I, yeah, I completely expect this. Corrupted data, which makes sense because there is no data there. If we check it out, it's still, yeah, we still got a bunch of empty bytes and not even a lot of those, which is an issue. Now there's a possibility there's an issue with the actual like compression implementation, and that's what the issue is, although I doubt it. But we should investigate that just in case. So this is where it failed because it tried to read. But we should check out writing. Um, I can probably just find writing. Writing compress save. It did write some stuff to it, which is what I wanted. And then it gives up and stuff, that's fine. I don't see any warnings or anything about gzip not being there or not being implemented, um, which is exactly what I was hoping for, <laughs> um, which would lead me to believe that gzip is actually working properly, which means it's a problem with my implementation. I do want to do two things. That way we can know exactly how much data is being written to and if things are doing bad things. All right. Now, since this is again corrupted, I'm going to delete it and we'll remake it once the game launches. Now I'm pretty confident this didn't work again because I didn't actually change anything that matters, 
but I did get some extra um, debug information, which is valuable to me. So in a surprise to absolutely no one, I am, again, the culprit for this issue. So you can see here, we actually now have data coming in here. The issue was I was trying to read, oops, I was trying to read from the end of compressed data when I should have been reading from the start of it. So I fixed that now, just I seek to the to the start. The reason why I was at the end was because we were writing to it. So now that that is working, let's see if we can load it. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't inspire confidence. Time to do some more debugging. That was just, uh, again, caused by my own ineptitude. Yeah, the guy who writes mods in most of his spare time is still pretty bad at writing mods. It's not really surprising. I'm bad at writing code at work too. I'm just slightly less bad than everyone else. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. That was the de that was the compressed version, and look, we've got everything here. It's wonderful. I think that's intended. Let's go with that's intended. I guess there's no rocks at the bottom anymore. That's it then. We've got a working compression system, and it was much faster than my last video, which was a big pain because there's a bunch of typing and stuff, but maybe I won't even have to fast forward all of that horrible stuff, if I'm lucky. Well, just before I go, I should mention that um, all of the code that I've written is available on git.xmods.org. Um, you know, check the full URL if you want to go here. It'll probably be linked in the description, the video description. But anyway, um, now finally I'm done. You can leave. Go go do something useful with your life instead of watching me talk to myself and write code. I mean, I'm not sure why you're watching me in the first place. It's not like I make interesting commentary on what I'm doing. I just sort of ramble on and on. So go do something useful.